So obviously I haven't posted a video in a while, and that's not something that I like to do. I like to try and keep a semi-consistent posting schedule, or at least, if not consistent, at least try and get one video out a month, you know, because uh, videos like these, they do take a while, but nonetheless, you know, going two months is not acceptable, so I'm going to try and uh, get a video out here as quickly as I can. But nonetheless, I've this is probably like my fourth time trying to record this, so I'm going to try and do this in one take and try and keep it under five minutes if I can, hopefully. Uh, nonetheless, reason why I haven't posted videos in a while. One, I am working on the computer tutorial series. I'm working on episode three. The video is basically done. I just have to edit it, and that's taking a little bit longer than normal because I want to try and up the quality a little bit, so... Even though it's going to take a little longer, hopefully it should be worth it. And hopefully when it comes out, you guys will see just how much work I put into it. So there's that. And the other reason why I haven't posted a video in a while is because I've been working on the Stackish Interpreter video. In fact, I meant to post a Stackish Interpreter video last month. I didn't. And I'm intending on posting one sometime within the next 7 to 10 days. No guarantees, but I'm going to try. Uh, the reason why I haven't posted a video about the Stackish Interpreter is because I'm still working on the Finite State Machine. I'll be honest, it's getting to be kind of ridiculous because uh, every time I go through a revision, it's basically the same process of consulting the instruction set, designing the state machine, converting it to a table, converting the table to strings of ones and zeros, and then taking the ones and zeros and converting it to a physical circuit. Making the actual state machine in a spreadsheet isn't that hard. It's converting it from a spreadsheet to a physical circuit. That's the hard part. Uh, so to try and help with this problem, I've actually created a little program that takes text files and converts them into lookup tables for me. Uh, and so that's actually what you're seeing here. You're not seeing me build something using the console. You're actually seeing the program that I wrote building the lookup table for me based on a text file that I gave it. So I think this will help tremendously when it comes to building lookup tables and building state machines because this will take a lot of the work out of it. Uh, however, there is one problem that I'm having with it, and that's actually why I'm making this video here. Uh, so whilst that's sitting here doing its thing, uh, there is a YouTuber by the name of ADW, I believe, ADW Production or something. Uh, I'm sorry if I'm butchering your name. I'll correct it in post. But he pointed me to a uh, to proper English and one of his videos uh, where he showed a decoder design that he made that I have actually started using. In fact, if you look up over to the left there, uh, that's actually his decoder design that you see there. And I'll fly over to it and show you it in more detail. But right now, this this program's working on line 40 of 63, and I can't move until it's done because it's based on relative position. So we'll just have to wait. But nonetheless, um, I've been using his decoder designs, and I think they're phenomenal. They are fan freaking tastic. In fact, I wish I had known about them sooner, uh, because they are everything that I've been looking for in a decoder. They are small on the input, they're small on the output, they're low profile, so it's super ideal to use. However, using them in this case, or, or building them in this case, is really difficult to do, even more so to get a program to do it. So, obviously, and the, the program's just finished up here, I can go ahead and fly over it. Uh, so this is the finished lookup table. And this is easy to write a program to do, because the, the frame is predictable. Uh, it's basically just lines that go this way, and on top of that, lines that go this way. And then anywhere that there's a 1 in the program, or in the text file, uh, we basically just place a torch there. So that's easy. These decoders, on the other hand, they're a little bit more difficult to build. Uh, they're not as predictable as, say, my old designs for decoders. In fact, if I can find one here. So this is a pretty complicated shape, but it's still predictable. It's the same shape repeated over and over again. And it's super easy to program because anytime you want a 1, you just place a torch. If you want a 0, you just place a repeater. And if you want to ignore that bit entirely, you just leave it blank. So that would be ideal for the program. But the problem is this design is too wide. And then there are other designs that are too long. There are other designs that are too tall. 
I want to stick with this one because it's the most ideal decoder, but man, is it a dip, is it a pain to make. So that's why I'm making this video. I want to see if somebody can come up with an algorithm uh, using, you know, the Minecraft set block and fill commands uh, to create a, a basic algorithm that can actually create something like this. Now, I should I should warn you that this isn't sequential decoders that I'm working with here. These are combinational decoders, which means the, the output isn't going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. It's going to be random. They could be in any order. There can be duplicates. Uh, there's no guarantee as to what the pattern is going to be. So, you know, you kind of have to create this algorithm with that in mind. And that's why I was struggling, because something like this, where there's already no pattern to begin with, and then try and make it so that it can take on any pattern uh, is really difficult to do. <laughs> so, I don't know. I'm, you know, I, I can um, I can post the source code that I made for this in the description to help you guys out. Uh, but honestly, I am not that good of a programmer. So, for for me to come up with something like this, it's too much of a challenge. So, I'm actually gonna give it to you guys and see if there's anybody out there who's smarter than I am. Uh, to try and figure this out for me, because if you can, that would be freaking awesome. And if you can help me write your program or your algorithm in uh, my program, I guess, I think this would be a super useful tool for computer enthusiasts, uh, because this would make it easier to create state machines and lookup tables like this uh, that anybody can, you know, make in a spreadsheet and then convert it to an actual circuit. So, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and give you guys the resources for that. Uh, if you can go ahead and uh, see what you can come up with, I'd love to. I'd love to hear from you guys because I think this would be great if somebody can come up with something. Uh, obviously, there are uh, pre uh, there are conditions that I want to have met, and I'll leave those details in the description if you choose to partake. Uh, otherwise, yeah, this is the end of this video. That's basically just what I wanted to show off. Uh, and I also wanted to announce that the episode 3 for the tutorial series, that is coming soon. And sometime within the next 7 to 10 days, you should expect a Stackish Interpreter video. So, look forward to that. And I will see you in the next video. Bye!